This is WildSnow.com. We're going through the new uh, Halo 28 Black Diamond pack using their Jet Force technology for an airbag in the pack. Uh, this is a pretty interesting development and what I would even call disruptive in the in this, the avalanche safety industry in that they're using electrical and electronics technology and a fan to inflate the airbag instead of a, the usual compressed gas type technology that's been around for, for decades actually. Totally new deal, we're going to go through it. We're up here in our wild snow field headquarters in Colorado where we built this little hut on top of a, a trailer. We're still on wheels. All the jet force packs are back panel access. So when we explain the, the technology and the componentry of this, we'll, we'll access it through the back. Pretty basic the way they've got it figured out here. Back panel folds down, and the uh, battery's down in here. The airbag wraps around. The ducted fan and the housing and all that are, are, are down in here. All right, so accessing the pack through the back panel, I'll hold it down with my knee there. Um, this is the, the fan housing and fan assembly, which is located in the, in the backpack down in here behind this, this red fabric. Um, incidentally, this whole mesh portion here acts as part of the, the uh, air intake for the fan, which is upwards of, of three square feet of surface area for the intake which is, you know, pretty significant because this, this thing has to inflate in, in just a few seconds. So, um, anyway, the, the fan housing looks like this. It has what's called a ducted fan inside, which we'll show you in a moment. But um, super powerful, draws 60 amps. 60 amps is, is very significant. In this case, about three seconds to blow up a 200 liter airbag. Amazing. Black Diamond feels that it's very important to have a good deflation system. So not only do they does the electronics in the airbag deflate the, the bag automatically after a certain amount of time, but the manual deflation is very easy. You just push this this slider button, pushes against the flapper valve, which is in this other side, and you and the air squeeze you can squeeze the air out and it comes out very easily. And then the airbag itself, you don't have to fold, you don't have to roll, you do nothing, you just stuff it in there. Super easy, eliminates a whole pain point that anybody is who uses airbags has experienced. With all this power, it allows the bag to inflate in, in about three seconds. After three minutes, the electronics in the power supply do an automatic deflation where it actually sucks the air back out of the bag. The idea of that being that not only can it leave an air? It can leave an airspace if you're buried in an avalanche, but also for convenience sake, so that if you are inflating the bag to for practice or accidentally, you're going to get the thing totally deflated in a th in three minutes, and you can stuff it back in the the storage. And here's the ducted fan and the fan housing again. Um, fun to look at the powerful fan, the kind of thing they'll use in in model jet planes and things like that. Um, in terms of how, when it, when the fan is sucking air in, it mo it's moves itself back because of the suction and stays in a, in a fixed position in the housing. When it reverses to suck the air out of the bag, it actually sucks itself over, and this little fang here opens up the the flapper valve and allows the bag to deflate, which I found to be a pretty ingenious little system. You can see it working there. The battery is, is down in here, pretty basic lithium ion battery, uh, hardwired into the pack. Black Diamond told me that they tried some connectors and just figured that was a possible failure point and it was much better to hardwire. Battery is good for something like four inflations, of course that's going to be dependent on temperature and the age of the battery and that sort of thing, but pretty good because you can practice all you want. Even in the field, you've got a few extra inflations. The electronics are down in here, and this is the battery, essentially. There's a couple of screws. You can remove the battery and actually have a spare battery. You're probably wondering how we recharge this thing. Pretty simple. The charger connects to a, a jack that 
is accessible here and also from the outside of the pack. In fact, one of the goals that VD had with this pack is you don't have to pack or unpack the pack to be able to pack the airbag, charge the battery, or any of that sort of thing. Everything's completely available with your, with your pack filled up and ready to go. So ostensibly, if you were an active backcountry skier or guide, you could leave your pack hanging in the hut with a, connected to your charger, get up in the morning, have your strudel, grab the pack and go. No packing, no fooling around. So here's the left side of the jet force. Um, you can see one of the intake vents here. Again, it's got multiple areas where it brings the air in when the fan's running, up to around three, three square feet of, of intake. The airbag is, is, has an interesting system of, of deployment and, and storage in that it doesn't use any, any Velcro. Instead, it has a mechanical system where it's, where it's attached. When you trigger it, this is the trigger. If I pull down here, it'll trigger the uh, electronics and trigger the bag. So I can pull up here just to get the bag um, out. What it does is it pulls this keyed in rod basically up and allows this to open and then the bag the bag can come out and then a coil zipper is easily opens up the rest of the bag comes cruising out. 200 liters. It's quite large. We'll deploy it in a few minutes. And then again, one of the advantages of this thing is you, you can roll it up, you can stuff it, you can do anything, but you don't there's no system for putting it in. You just stuff it. So you can practice with this thing in the field and very quickly get it put back together. Bag stuff in there. You've got to hook up the zipper slider and then whammo, get your zipper all the way over. It slides down the unused part of the, of the coil zipper, tucks down in there. Little tab here that reconfigures the, uh, the clip system. There, you pull it down and then these clips head over here and just clip in. Now keep in mind this is the first time I've ever packed this pack. So you can see really how easy it is. Pretty impressive. Bam bam. The design one of the designers told me that this is for when you ski really, really fast so that you won't get any snow packing in the pack. Although you might want to just leave it like this so when you get into the hut everybody can see how fast you ski. Neaten it up a little bit and bam. Ready to rock. Oh and then close the back panel. The trigger is pretty basic. Uh, I was told that they opted for this configuration rather than the T-handle. After some studying and thinking about it and finding out that things like mitten hands don't work very well on T-handles. Probably a wash one or the other in our opinion, but I'm sure it works fine. A uh, bunch of little lights here indicate what's going on with it. And again, when you want to just open it without triggering it, you can pull this black portion here. If you're going to trigger it, you grab this baby and just yank, and off you go with the fan howling and filling the bag up. Stowage. The upper diagonal ski carries in a little red pocket to keep the pack clean. It anchors back to the frame so that when you strap the skis in, you're underneath the bag but you can compress it down so your skis don't flop around. And then the tails of the skis, of course, go through the conventional tail loop down at the bottom of the pack. And then if you go up in here, you're going to find your PLA mounting and your helmet, your helmet uh, storage and carrying system. So that's about it from uh, wildsnow.com in terms of an introduction to the basic configuration of the pack. Next we'll deploy it and see what it sounds like and looks like when a fan fills an airbag. Uh, this is wildsnow.com. We're just going to do a little inflation of the Black Diamond Jet Force 
avalanche airbag pack. This is the trigger. Um, it's configured not as a T-handle, but as this just a, a circular cylindrical grip. Easy to grab with either right or, or left hand, with mittens, bare hands, whatever. This red button on the bottom is basically the on-off switch. It's off right now. To turn it on, I'm going to hold that in until I hear a system self-check. It's about four seconds, something like that. All right, that was the system self-check. It was checking the fan to go around and all that stuff. I'm getting the indicator light tells me it's ready to go. So to do a demo, I'm just going to yank the uh, trigger, and then I'll rotate around a little bit so you guys can see the, the bag blow up. Pay attention to the way the bag easily comes out of the pack, the zipper comes open, and then the, ba the bag is fairly large and tends to even maybe protect your head a little bit. The bag's going to keep cycling to keep itself inflated. <laughs> now we're in the second phase where it's just basically going to stay inflated and then it's going to kick into the deflation phase after about three minutes. Still staying inflated, staying inflated. Basically the European standards for this say the bag has to stay inflated for three minutes. So Black Diamond made sure that that happens with the bag. But one thing to remember about the way they made these is they're a lot more resistant to small cuts because the the uh, fan can keeps inflating it and keeps the pressure up. So it just keeps pumping a little air in there, keeping itself inflated. Nice and nice and tight, ready to float you above that, that slide you might be in. So. And that's the deflation phase that could conceivably leave an air pocket around your head, but also conveniently makes the bag very easy to pack.